Welcome to the Winner's Playbook with Steve and Josh. Disclaimer, the information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. Please head to the show notes if you wish to book a free 15-minute call to discuss your personal situation. Welcome back to the Winner's Playbook. My name is Steve Sloan, uh, Managing Director of Link Wealth Group. I've got with me my other director, Josh Lee. Josh, what's the latest? How are we going this week? Good, Steve. It's always one of my favorite times of the week where I get to spend Good sort of 20, it. 30 minutes with you having a chat. So I had nothing better to finish off my uh, my week. Um, what's been happening? Lots going on around the house. Uh, just, yeah, we're doing lots of things around the house at the moment. Yeah. Had problems with the pool. Yeah. Um, just all That's things fine. that usually come with, with house, which has been painful. So solar has been leaking. We had to turn that off. Had to get a pool guy in. Uh, got some gates going in at the moment. So just a lot of money going out in the house at the moment, which I anticipated. Um, and yeah, just some other things going on. We did, I did a video the other day on social media uh, talking about the FIRE movement and that's FIRE, um, like financial independence, retire early, that whole sort of um, thing. And it didn't get much views on on TikTok. It only had about 800 views. But then lo and behold, a guy from a senior um, editor from Yahoo Finance has reached out and had an interview with him this morning uh, talking about the whole FIRE movement. So it's just it's pretty amazing the actual outreach of of some of this social media that, that we're doing. And there's going to be an article that goes out later today or or Monday on on the topic and some other things that we spoke about as well. So it's uh yeah, been a pretty, pretty interesting, interesting week outside of the outside of the business. What about you, Steve? What's what's been happening? Uh, mate, similar, um, you know, bits of stuff at home. It's, ex- it's amazing how expensive that stuff racks up, right? When you start spending, God, it's expensive. Uh, a bit of, you know, as soon as you start doing anything with your house, it just costs money. Uh, mate, unfortunately my son was a bit sick this week. So, um, mm. I've had to rip him into hospital a couple of times and I did a post on it. I just thank God how good our healthcare system is. You know, it's, uh, you, I think we take it for granted what well, I definitely probably did. And, uh, yeah, they turned him around within 20 minutes and, got him in there and got him, you know, looked at. So, uh, yeah, and that was on a Sunday and a Monday, which is incredible. Um, but, look, apart from that, he's, held, he's back on deck now. And, uh, I'm trying to get him to play footy tomorrow, so hopefully... hopefully he's straight back good. into it. No, no uh, I'm hoping, Well, it's his last game, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get him on the field. But uh, I've got a couple it, of yeah. no votes from the mother. But yeah, that's, right. we'll, we'll see how we go. Anyway, so uh, look, today's topic, mate, um, and, and this is this is for everyone. This one and, and securing your legacy with estate planning, and, and sometimes this this topic can be a bit dull, uh, a bit dreary, but it's very important. Um, your estate planning and, and getting it right. If we kick it off, mate, what is estate planning, and why is it why is it so important? If we go there first. Yeah, estate planning. So that's just all dealing with basically what happens in the event of a worst case scenario. And that's yeah. usually going to be you dying or you are completely incapacitated and you can't make your decisions for yourself. So that that's essentially what it is. It's dealing with that worst case scenario. So in the event of you passing away, where do your assets go? Where are they distributed? To whom do you want them to be received? Is that your partner, your kids, friends, family, whatever it may be? And then the other sort of layer to the estate planning function. Uh, well, there's, there's multiple layers. I should say there's also like, you know, if, you, if something happens to you, who's the guardian or legal guardian for your kids um, can be factored in there. So who's going to be the one that's looking after your kids? That's usually stuff that's captured through estate planning or through through your will uh, as well. But then the other sort of function there to look at is um, maybe you haven't passed away, but you're in a serious accident or something happens to you and you're disabled or you you just can't physically make decisions for yourself anymore. And that's where something comes in called a power of attorney. And that's where usually you have someone who can make medical decisions for you or financial decisions for you. And that's generally what the estate planning function is. It's just basically covering in the event of a worst case scenario, you've got the correct um, you know, paperwork, documentation, legal work all done so that you know your assets will go where you want and who you want will basically manage it for you. So I don't know if you would say any other parts of that, Steve, is that pretty No, no, I think you, you nailed it there. Um, you know, I think it's just making sure everyone knows what they need to do if in that worst case scenario, uh, get everyone on the same page and get the right team on the on the page with you, whether it's family members or external. Um, but no, that's yeah. getting it documented is, is 100% correct. So there's nothing else I need to say there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. mate, what, is, you know, what, what are the key components we look at when we, you know, obviously as advisors, we, we touch on wealth generation, which is yep. key. We, we, we look at wealth protection. Um, mm-hmm. and part of that is also the estate planning. So from an advisor perspective, what are the, the main things we want to see from clients that get uh, get ticked off? 
Yeah, and one thing I'll say is like estate planning, it's kind of like insurance. It's not sexy, yeah? Like you're not you're yeah. not putting your money into something that's growing. You know, you you have to have, you know, grim conversations sometimes in a way like, you know, what happens to me? What happens to my wife? Where does it all go? Who gets it? Like they're not they're not easy and they're not nice conversations, but it's something that I think sometimes people tend to sweep under the rug. <clears throat> and that's not 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 good because um you know you're just kind of putting your head in the sand and ultimately we all die so you know it's yeah, it's just something that everyone has to do but the main components of it um one would be looking at say your will and that's you know if you pass away where do all of the assets go how are they managed your powers of attorney I already touched on that one as well and that's giving directive to who you're essentially giving power to to manage your financial or medical affairs if uh, something was to happen to you and sometimes commonly where we might see the powers of attorney come into action is for you know elderly parents going into care so going into aged care and they might um, make their kids their powers of attorney who can then legally make decisions on their behalf when they might not be able to but some other um, areas of the the estate plan that could be your beneficiaries through your superannuation. So it's probably worth pointing out that um, I've done a few videos on it in the last couple of weeks. Superannuation, you have to make a nomination through your super fund as to who you want to receive your money in the event of you passing away. And this is where it gets a little complicated because superannuation is actually not an estate asset, so it doesn't actually fall part of your will unless you nominate your will to be the beneficiary of your superannuation fund. So there's yeah. a bit of complexity or nuance to the. Uh, the beneficiary side with super because you can only nominate certain people under the superannuation uh, superannuation legislation which put simply is your spouse, a child of any age, someone you have what's called an interdependency relationship with, which basically means you live together, you provide some sort of care and you're financially dependent upon one another in some way, shape or form. And that could be actually anyone that could could possibly be a friend um, that you might satisfy those rules with. But if you don't have a spouse, you don't have any kids and you don't have any sort of financial dependence in a way, that's where you would then have to look at lo um, nominating what's called your legal personal representative. And that just means if you were to pass away, your super is actually distributed over through to your will and then will be distributed according to however your will states. And that's where it really opens up the um, who you can nominate because in your will, you can literally nominate anyone. Steve, you could even in fact nominate me to take all your assets in the event of you pass away. I don't know if that's how you've got it, but I'm I'm hoping that's the case. Are you, well, you going to call your, 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 your son Steve? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see what's up for grabs. We'll, we'll, see. we'll see what's up for grabs. But yeah, with your will, you can literally nominate anyone. It could be even a charity as well. You could leave your money to a charity through a will. You can be very specific of who you live and um, the money to. And then there are probably some complexities that you can get more into. Like if we're dealing with greater amounts of wealth, that's where you might consider things uh, like a testamentary trust, which is actually a trust that does get set up upon your passing through your will or through the mechanism of your will. So it's a new trust that doesn't exist right now, but it will exist when you pass on. And then basically you can have your assets get pulled into this trust. And then typically you might have that when you want it to be managed for some, you know, young kids or something like that. Like if kids were going to inherit, you know, five, 10, $15 million and they're, you know, below age 18, like what on earth are they going to do with it? I'll probably even say if they're below 25, what on earth are they going to do with it? How are they going to manage it? And that's where we do have some clients that, um, you know, do put provisions in their estate plans to have a uh, testamentary trust. And I'm working with a client at the moment, a couple retirees, and um, they have two sons, you know, probably circa five mil of assets and yeah. they really want to make sure that if something happens to them that there are uh, the the kids wives not that there's a poor relationship there but they basically want to protect the wealth in the family and ensure if they pass on basically the wives of their kids or their two sons wouldn't have any access or limit the access to, to get their assets in the event of them passing away and then down the line there's a relationship breakdown and and things like that. So um yeah there's a lot of sort of avenues you can go on with the with the estate planning side of things. But um what what about you, Steve? You know, I, I guess they're areas that we do touch on with lawyers. So they're not really areas that we that we advise on. Um what what's been your experience with est estate planning? Yeah, so look, I think um, at, at Link we 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 deal mostly with you know superannuation beneficiaries and the like, and as soon as the will, and yeah, you know, we recommend every to every client to get a will, and that's one area that's changed a lot. I think in the last five years in particular, because um, a lot of service providers out there now, you can get your will done fairly low cost and and um, you know get it all sorted for you. It's not as complex as or costly as to what it used to be. Uh, yeah, we, we we currently use an external company called Yodel that's through our website that people can do their will through and it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, but it's just important. I think that the biggest issues is people not getting it done. Um, you know, unfortunately, year on year, sometimes I see the same clients who 
say they'll get it done and don't get it done. That's probably the biggest area that needs to be looked at because um, you, you sort of only got to do it once, get it done once, and then it's done. You know, right? So, it, you know, it, except for your beneficiary nominations, you may need to change that every now and then on your super funds, but your yep. will itself, you generally just can get it done once and, and just up, keep it updated. So, I think mm. it can be pretty straightforward, but I think it's just taking a bit of action, get it sorted, get it done. As you said, it's not the most gl- glorified topic to yep. to deal in, but if you can just get it sorted and uh, and then move on from there, you, you, you're good to go. Well, can I ask then, Steve, like we, you've heard of DIY kits and you can, I think you can still get them from the post office, yeah. the old DIY will kit, 50 yeah. to a hundred dollars and let's, you know, Hey honey, let's sit down and let's write where we want everything to go. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts when clients bring up DIY kits? And then to that, why would someone <clears throat> not do a DIY kit? Cause you know, it's going to cost obviously more to work with a solicitor. And can we talk maybe approximate costs of, of yeah. getting some wills done? Like what, what are we looking yeah. at there and what's so yeah, what DIY thoughts? kits are absolutely legal. You just don't want to make a mistake on them. Um, mm. So that's probably there. If you if you do stuff it up in any way, shape or form, it can be invalid and it yes. won't be enforceable. So it's probably worth nothing really. Um, and if you've got anything outside very basic needs, then you definitely don't do a, a basic will, right? Because if you've got trust set ups, family trust, complex family structures with either divorce partners or you know, really complex family situations, Absolutely, you do not want to do a basic will. You want to get a proper set of professional eyes looking at your circumstances, i.e. a lawyer, going through the data, making sure it's all set up correctly, making sure – the because it's different state to state and there's legislation yes. and stuff like that. Who knows which state you live in, you might live in, your beneficiaries might live in, you know, a range of issues there that I or you would not know the intricacies because we're not lawyers. Mm. But absolutely, you'd want to get the professional help there if it's outside anything other than very, 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 very basic. Um, yeah. In terms of costs, look, uh, you know, for good wills, you're probably looking for, you know, somewhere between 1000 to $2,000 for your standard will, let's say. Yes, it can be a lot more than that for very complex needs, but it's yep. warranted, right? Because if it's yep. really complex, there's lots of money involved, lots of asset base. You know, you only, you, you've got to do it once, once only properly and get it sorted. Um, but, you know, they, they're competitive. It used to be a lot more than that, I reckon, mm. back in the day. So it's come down a lot. And, uh, you know, but, but you get it done once, get it done right, get the proper lawyer involved and, um, and away you go. Do you ever see anyone that um, says, well, you know, what's the point of getting a will done? Because my kids will just figure it out, you know, when when we go. And I'm saying that because I won't name names, but I have some people in my family that who actually have that exact belief and said, look, the kids are going to work it out when we go and it's it's fine. It's going to, you know, they won't fight or anything of sorts. Like, do you ever have yeah. clients that say, look, what's the point of getting it done? Or? Oh, look, that that's a recipe for disaster, a it complete is. recipe for disaster. It's called dying intestate. Which means the, the the rules of the government are the ones that really decide where the where it's going to end up. So and the, and people can contest the hell out of it. Um, yeah, recipe for complete disaster because it's then it's out of your hands in some way, yeah. shape, or form where it's going to go. People may say, "Oh no, surely it'll end up with X." Well, it won't it? You know, it'll go where the the, the legislation says it should. Um, and who knows what happens to your family arrangements at that point in time. Who's had kids and who's had more family members? Who's had more partners? Yeah, yep. that's. I think that's probably looking back on my last twenty years of being in advice, and that's probably the biggest mistake people can make, to be honest mm. with, with this particular topic of estate planning. Apart from not having beneficiaries listed on your super fund, and then all of a sudden you die, and we've yep. got a mess of mess of a thing going on here because the trustees of the the super fund hold on to your money for a year or two, trying to work out where the money should go. Yeah, that's that's a mistake. But secondly, people thinking that. Ah, oh, it'll be fine, Bob. Well, that's that's your that's your second big one because it uh, it's, mm. it it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like it's interesting because it's like the whole idea is like we don't want to spend the money on it, and that's the people I'm thinking of. They don't want to spend the money on it, but then it's like your kids are then going to have to probably lose or spend a lot of cost to get this thing figured out yeah. in the event of for you guys basically not wanting to to do that. So it's it's a weird it's a weird situation, but it's it's a good point that you mentioned that dying interstate because that was a point I was going to touch on. Mm. Is you know you, if you don't have a will, that's what it's called. You die interstate, mm. and like you said, and this varies depending on which state you're in in Victoria, but there are set guidelines as to how they will figure out where your money goes. And I was actually just on the legal aid uh, website for Victoria and it basically looks at, you know, who gets the estate and they go down the line and it starts with, so if a person had no partner or children, then all of the estate will go to the relatives in this order. Your parents, no parents, goes to the siblings, no siblings, then it goes to grandparents, aunts and uncles, 
goes to the cousin. So cousin down the line, you hear of those stories Jeez. where it goes to the cousin. There you go. But then if it goes down further than that, the estate um, does not pass to the government unless there is no living relative. So if there was no re living relatives, you are at risk of literally the government collecting Straight to the government. Your, your assets. So at the very <laughs> least, you might have some friends that you want to... And I have some clients that actually have done this. They've actually nominated yeah. and structured everything so that their best friend down the road can actually yeah. take their assets because they don't have kids, they don't have a partner. There's no one they want to leave it to, which is <laughs> completely fine. But I've got a great example of that. My mum yep. uh, got an inheritance from her mate. Um, wow. It was like two hundred fifty thousand wow. um, dollars. She didn't really want to give it to anyone else. She, she had kids. She didn't have kids, so she's like, you know what? I'll just give it to mum. And she ended up with the cash yep. and a car. Yeah. <laughs> so, cash and a car. Yeah. There you go. Great deal. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Well, the last po point I might then we might touch on is then um, you know estate taxes and how that then, which is a complex area uh, in it, in itself. And I guess parts probably where we probably work in, in advice is we always would work very closely with a lawyer around anything to do with an estate, estate plan. But, um, do you, what, what about conversations, Steve, where we help clients around, you know, superannuation? Cause there's no such thing as death tax in, in Australia, but there really is on your superannuation, which a lot of people not necessarily too sort of privy to. Um, what do you talk about when clients say, is there ways of minimizing tax, you know, for my kids or whoever to get these, these assets down the line? What do you, what are your thoughts? What do you say? Uh, yeah, look, there's definitely taxes on on death if you don't structure it correctly, um, mm. and you can definitely reduce that. So get good, mm. some good advice around that. Um, you know, you can. There's a taxable component if it gets paid out of a pension fund if it's not reduced to zero. So there's a number of strategies we can use. Some people think, oh, it's in it's set up in a tax free environment, and I get my tax free income, so I'm good to go. Well, that's not the case. If you actually dig under the cover of anyone over the age of sixty into their super funds, you may find there's a taxable and a non-taxable component on all, on all your super funds, which means there's a taxable component if you passed away. Um, and if that gets passed on to, you know, other than your, your spouse, pretty much, then you're gonna pay some tax. So yeah. you've got to be really careful there and it can be considerable. Yeah, it can yep. be a lot, a lot of tax. So yeah, get, get some advice around that, especially if you're in that retirement zone and you set up pension funds that are paying your tax for incomes or whatever it may be, if you haven't had an advisor, look at under the cover there in detail around how you're structured, get some good advice because there's way to fi ways to fix it. We yep. do sort of re-contribution strategies where we rip the money out, put it back in again, play around with it, switch between spouse and you know, your partner, et cetera, and move the money around. Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely some ways to fix it, but do it now because um, you know, it's too late after the event, right? Yeah, no, totally. And I, um, I'm working with a couple of clients at the moment now where there's a, there's a father, there's three, three adult kids, you know, they're all in their sort of forties and fifties now and the father's, you know, pushing into the, the into the eighties, but, uh, no, sorry, in, in the mid seventies, I should say. And the conversation that we just had in the last couple of days was the money from super is going to be left to the three adult kids in the event of father passing away. And let's just say the balance is $400,000. Like you said, super's got a taxable and a tax-free component. This guy's super fund is all taxable. So in the event of him passing away, virtually the fund would have to withhold 17% of his fund by way of taxes because it's going to adult kids. If the kids yep. are below age 18, it's different. It can be tax-free. But when it's adult kids, 17% and you know 17% on uh, 400 grand, you do the math there, it's not nice. So not nice. no. the good thing though in this situation is uh, father is actually below 75. So we have this very small window where we can actually pull some funds out of super get them back in tax free and basically wipe out all of or nearly all of the taxable component of his super fund which is virtually going to save the beneficiaries when he passes away yeah, obviously we all pass grand. away 60 plus grand yeah. which is huge so huge. you know there's but you don't want to leave it too late like you said you, you gotta you know you gotta keep the runway um for it but there's, there can be some really good strategies you know that are around and the other point i was going to touch on as well is um when you're getting towards, you know, in your 50s and, and 60s and then also Centrelink consideration, you might be looking at early inheritances or gifting away assets in advance to your kids. And there's sometimes yep. there's a bit of confusion around that, like property, uh, shares or cash. Like cash is a bit different. You can just give that away. There's no issues around around cash. But then with property, you could virtually give away your, your asset to the kids or sell it to the child for a dollar, even though the property's worth a million dollars. There's no issues of doing that. But then you also got to factor in taxes that you'll be up for if it's an investment property stamp duty that the child's still going to pay. But it might um, pay to actually do that stuff in advance before you reach, say, 65 or 67, because it might actually give you a Centrelink uplift as well. If you want to get rid of those assets uh, before you reach age pension age, 
it might actually be beneficial for you to start getting rid of those assets uh, in advance because Centrelink does have a rule where they can capture five years before you reach age pension age. And if, give, if you've given an asset away within that five-year time frame, even if you don't have it, they'll still assess you like you have it under the deprivation rules. So um, probably throwing in a last little bit of com complexity at the end there, but there's there's plenty of options out there for absolutely everyone. And like we've just said a lot of times throughout this podcast, uh, the earlier you can start planning on this stuff the better. So anything you would add there, Steve, before we close? No, just get it sorted. Uh, it is an area that you can just do, get it cleaned up and done and, and then just t tinker with it as you go. But yeah, just get get some eyes onto it, get a professional look at it, get it all sorted in one hit um, and uh, yeah, you're good to go. Yeah, I agree. And um, yeah, that guys, we're going to finish up today. That's all we've got time for. And please, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate everyone that is obviously tuning and listening to us. We do get into some juicy topics though today. So if there is something that you're unsure of that we just spoke about, don't feel like you were stupid not understanding things that we just mentioned because there is a lot of complexity to a lot of those areas that we just said. And as always, then if you do want to have a chat with any of the financial advisors in the business, jump on the website, pick a uh, advisor of your choice, 15 minute call, and um, then we can actually talk about your personal situation situation and what might actually be relevant for your own situation. So Steve, until next time, mate, I'll see you then. See you, mate. Bye. Catch you.